Hey everybody, this is your friendly neighborhood accountant, and today we're doing the ultimate guide to hand buff Scoia'tael. You might notice that this version of the deck has some changes from the original that I posted three days, and that comes from a player who I'm just going to call D, who sent me a private message suggesting that I switch out the leader to Francisca and change one of the Quen signs to an Azure's Thunder. I might take out like the last raid and put in something else. Hand this version of hand buff has the um, the bronze units and Hattori as our hand buff suite. Those all those cards work together to um, commit pretty much be the majority of your power. We also have the uh, ambush bamboozle suite, which comes with Isengrim, um, Morin, Teruvial, and Illyrian. Teruvial and Illyrian work together because it, once Teruvial flips over, it'll count as an elf and bring in Illyrian if that has five elves. You'll see me use that strategy to win at least one game. Um, one of the nice things is if you don't use uh, Teruvial to get Illyrian the first time, you can revive her with Hattori to get her another round. So that you have like two chances to get the um, bamboozle because some players will recognize what you're doing and destroy one of your elves so you don't do it. Some players are not conscious enough of the elf game to know that that's what you're trying to do and they won't kill off your units, surprisingly. Okay, uh, outside of that we have some tech cards. Um, most notable of this is going to be Wily. He um, helps you counter Neckers since there's not a Shrooms in this deck counters um, other ambush cards and he handles iris so if you want to get rid of an iris that's been placed on your board you can use um, wily to do that the other important cards is almost all of our cards are elves the only exception being morin and um, wily so you can use oh, ivoreth to get that uh, bonus to all the cards in your hand now note that if Yavin's in your hand, he's also going to get the buff from Yorvith, and that can be really bad unless, you know, you're just playing it to um, drain your opponent of resources. The main benefit of this deck is that it's really resistant to removal because you have the Quen sign, a guaranteed Quen sign that's coming out. You have lots of points going on the board. You do not have weather removal. If you want to insert weather removal into the deck, you can always remove Yavin and put in... Um, a silver mage to uh, give you that clear weather option. Most of the time weather's not a big deal to me unless you're going up against hardcore weather in which case you're gonna probably want the weather removal. I usually just use passing on a, making um, let's say I win the first round hard then I just kind of waste the second round make them play as many weathers as possible so that they are and then use the round end to clear the weathers and that's how I usually deal with um, weather heavy decks when I don't have very much removal of that weather. Uh, one of the things that you need to keep tabs on is the number of elves you have on the board when you're playing with Teruvial and the buffs going to Hattori. You should easily get Hattori up to six points if you have to use a hawker support to just do that and then you can use Hattori to revive Teruvial. So without further ado we're going to go into some games first game is up against uh, one of those dastardly spy players. I actually find spy relatively easy to deal with because we can remove uh, their units that hit you for every time they um, play a spy. I opened up with Yavin. Yavin has a high chance of getting me renew, which is fine. Um, mostly because I didn't want to just throw something onto the board and give him something to target. It's weird uh, <laughs> he was able to pull back my Yavin. He's going to get a lot of card advantage this game because he's going to take advantage of the fact that I'm playing slowly to just play like a few cards at a time. So he has a huge board. I don't have to play things here to win the round, but I want to win the round. So I'm going to. It's generally the philosophy I'm going to be playing here. Um, you could say that this is controversial, but if I go down a card, I'm actually going to go down two cards here. Um, I still get a card back if I pass instantly in the final round. I decide not to destroy, um, to uh, banish one of his cards. 
because I wanted to get a good value Yorvith off. I still have... Um, I can still revive Ifleen if I wanted to. To get Devil Azure's Thunder, remove his guys that way. This was a cur uh, curious thing he did here. So I decided to play that over here because I'm not terribly afraid that I'm going to um, lose that unit. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to have enough elves on the board. He gave me one of the elves. I have to remember that Yavin is an elf. Yes, he has three cards over me, but can he um, win this round? If this player was aware of elves, he could easily win this round without triggering my Illyrian. I'm fairly close to getting all of what I want. I'm still getting like buffs every turn, so I can take advantage of that. Okay, here's what really confused me. Why didn't he kill my Dragoon? It didn't make any sense to me. Like, I would have won that even if Illyrian did not come onto the board. So it's it's kind of confusing. But I won the round. Um, even if I had lost that round, because card advantage isn't terribly meaningful if you force your opponent to play their win condition. <sighs> So our next game is against Radovid. They're going to probably try to tempo me a lot. My strategy against Radovid is I have to play around the locks. I could have probably pushed out even more cards than I had. Um, opening up like this might not have been the best idea. I could have opened up with a Farseer. I was done quickly. My opponent decided to uh, win for uh, pass early in round one, which is fine by me. I'm going to open up with a Dragoon. Mostly because I don't expect to win this round anyways. I have the Lacerate in my hand, so I could use Lacerate. Um, and that's why I put Yavin in that row. My opponent uh, uses Object Compression. So he used it on the Dragoon. I'm not really using the Dragoon. I, I want to get Dragoon's points. but um, The sooner I can get his locks out, the better. That's my philosophy here. But it's probably not, it's like really tough to figure out what to, what to play onto the board. Decided to just go with a second um, Yorvith. Now I've gotten two points out of Yorvith for all my units in my hand, so that's uh, other than uh, Wily. I fortunately keep my uh, Dragoon alive. Okay. He killed off my Dragoon, so it's not a big deal that it's still on the board. I'm going to push out my uh, last rate, unfortunately. I could have done something else with the last rate, but... Uh, and last rate is bored. That would have been an effective uh, play as well. Uh, one of the issues with playing um, lock, I mean um, ambush cards, is they can get locked. And I'm going to expect to get locked in this game quite often. I'm protected from Scorches because of um, Yavin, which is great. So see, he has a locked. I'm not, I wasn't expecting that one in particular. But here I have a choice of just super accelerating myself to the um, lead. Play just one card and do that. Arguably, it would probably have been better to have not done that, but I wanted to get some card advantage going into the final round. Decided to continue to press my luck. My opponent apparently played a really low value card, so I decided to force it. Um, I do not know why he picks this card. He has no spells left in his deck that he can use. He might have forgotten that it does not... Um, count other spells other he might have had like a weather in his deck that he thought he would be able to pull with Ithleen I don't think he would have been able to have gone in ahead even with um, Yorvith because it would have just been 14 points for him and I don't I think he was more than 14 points behind 
Uh, he would have gotten an extra point from the tick damage, though. So you have to take that into account. I play off the Farseer first because I can always pull, um, uh, because I get the boost from using Francisca. I decided to get Yorvith because I was expecting the Dragoons. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to pass here. I have a lot more points on the board than I'm showing, and I get Illyrian out of my deck if this passes. Okay, he passes. You also have to note that he has not used any spells. Well, he's used like one, really, one or two. But it wasn't all, they weren't the most effective spells. I'm gonna open up with the Farseer again. Farseer is awkward because it's eight, it has eight strength. And then I'm gonna follow up with Ithleen for Quen Signs. Put some dragoons on the board. Uh, the issue here is that I could have gotten scorched pretty bad if I had uh, misplayed that, so a Yaven might have been better to be first here. My general philosophy against Spellatel is to not give them anything to hit with their your spells as much as possible. Um, I decide to, I'm not going to let you have any dragoons and get rid of that immediately because a lot of their strategy relies on having Dragoon buffs, in my opinion. Okay. Now, my Ambush card is not going to be hit by the uh, trap. It's not expecting the uh, bear. Bear was not as high value as it could have been. One of the reasons why I didn't play right away is because I was worried about um, Scorches, but I guess he just didn't have them in this version of his deck. I would have been better off um, extending the, that round and just bullying him in the final round. It ends up not mattering. <laughs> I Here I was contemplating whether or not it would be better to uh, get a... Teruvial or a um, what we call it Morin. There we go. <laughs> and so I win uh, by a good five points. Given the fact that they got their full strategy off without me really inhibiting them. I think I did a pretty good job. Our next game is up against a monster player. The mulligans are sometimes difficult in this. Is like, what do I want to get rid of? The shrooms aren't really effective against monsters because they don't do much buffing. I'm gonna open up with Quen Sign. Pretty standard safe move. I'm actually happy they got rid of Ithleen because I can always revive Ithleen if I need to. Another option was to open up with a Farseer, which would probably have been better. I'm going to misplay in this first round a bit, but uh, by putting all my units in different rows. I should not have done this. I'm sorry guys, it really caught, it almost cost me the game to do this. I I had gotten in my head something completely bizarro going on, because I would have saved myself from an extra like 8 damage, which would have made this easier. I was still go aiming to lose this round, so it wasn't the end of the world. <laughs> my opponent played 52 points, I would, it just would have been closer if I hadn't split it up in all three lanes like that. It was really dumb. <laughs> so don't do that if you're me. Okay, they're going to lock that. That's fine. I just have to win this round. 
Okay. Again, I'm kind of putting things in multiple rows, but that's because I know I'm going to have to put something in the each row anyways. Another option you can do is to deny them their... Um, if you get rid of their hounds, they can't revive them. Or, I mean, pull more of them with the navigator. Okay. So I make a uh, decision and I go with... Um, that I have to waste one of my cards, so I'll go with the weaker of the two. I unfortunately get a Illyrian, which I have not pulled onto the board yet, and there's no way I can pull it onto the board anymore. Decide to go with Morin just in case they play a gold card that uh, dies to it. And then I win the round. It's pretty good. Now we're going to do a Henselt. Henselt, this is where removal is even more important. I could have kept the Azur's Thunder knowing that I would use it as removal in this game. I'm actually happy to have drawn those. Anytime the uh, rounds are lengthened like this, it's good for me. I'm going to pull... Uh, you, uh, I'm deciding between Yorvith and Ithlene. I go with Yorvith. Why? Because Yorvith will allow me to remove his... Um, siege supports, which are ex basically what carries Northern Realms. Okay, he's going to do a spy. I'm going to do a spy. I have all my, I have my full win condition in my hand. I assume that if he's going to play that, he's either going to um, revive a bunch of them or just. You guys got a general idea why he probably did that. Okay, uh, I decided to keep the shrooms because. He probably has the combo with um, the troll. Um, I think it's Trollolor. Trollolor and the armor stealing guy. And because when you do that, it's absurd. And so I have to have some form of reset. I'm going to remove any siege experts I see immediately. Okay. Not upset about that at all. I actually switched out the last rate for a shrooms at the last moment, so that's why you're seeing that now. Okay, I'm going to remove his last... I'm thinking of removing his last siege expert instead of playing the dragoons, just to prevent him from getting a ton of value out of those. Now I play my own dragoons. Arguably I should not be doing this and just let him push this round, but I want to get his leader ability out. That's what I'm kind of waiting for. I could arguably win this round, but the sooner I get his leader ability out, the better. Because it counters his ability to do very much in this round. Okay. He gets his win condition out. I'm not terribly concerned about it. Gonna have to push out more. Okay, there goes Troll a little. Gonna play out Morin. Morin's probably not gonna get a lot of value, so Teruvial might have been better. But if I snipe out his guy that gets buffed from stealing armor, all the better. Or if I snipe out a high value gold card, it's another option. It's just unlikely that I get it. So. My opponent forfeits. Win the game. And after that, I won two more games and ranked up to rank 14. Hope you guys enjoyed. His name is